Hello and welcome to this MAST JDAVIS guided walkthrough. Today we will be going over three topics. How to view data and create a model. How to plot and identify spectral lines. And how to use this information to estimate the redshift of your target. Although this video is meant to tell a cohesive story, it is also subdivided into chapters, so feel free to skip ahead to the chapter that is most relevant to your needs. Upon opening the data, this is the page that you should see. To the left, we have metadata information, which includes information about the target, the instrument that was used, as well as some additional observation parameters, and some of the instrument keywords. For this tutorial, we don't need to focus too much on this information, so we'll close it using the Close Info Panel button in the upper left. That leaves us with a good view of the data itself. There are four peaks present in this data. We're going to focus on fitting a model to the second largest peak, which is located on the right half of our screen. Let's take a closer look at the area around the peak of interest. To do that, we can use one of the tools that are located in the upper right toolbar. That tool is Zoom to Drawn Region. So if we click on that, and we select a region around our peak, the figure will automatically resize itself to zoom in on that region. For additional data analysis, we can use the Select Range of X Values tool to pick out a subset of data that we're interested in analyzing. Let's pick out a subset of data that includes the peak and some of the surrounding area. JD Avis also includes modeling features, which we can access by opening up the Plot Options sidebar. We'll get many different options for things that we can do with our data. For this example, let's go to Model Fitting. We've already selected the region that we want to analyze. It's labeled subset one. This is the area in red surrounding our peak and including the peak itself. Next, we need to pick the components of our data model. Let's start with a linear model. We're going to label this L and we'll add component. We're also going to add a Gaussian model to model the peak itself and we'll label this G. The overall model, which we can enter into the equation editor, is L plus G, the linear plus the Gaussian. Thinking about what we would expect in a linear model, there doesn't appear to be much slope on this line, so we'll leave that at zero. As for the intercept, it looks like the spectrum has a continuum value of just over a thousand. Let's change the intercept to reflect that. For the Gaussian, it looks like it ranges somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500, so an amplitude of 500 seems a reasonable guess. For the mean, if we make a very rough estimate, we might say it were 17.5 microns. And if we wanted to crudely estimate the standard deviation, we might say that this Gaussian ranges between 17.48 and 17.5 microns. That's not a totally accurate estimation of the width, However, we don't need that much accuracy for the model fit to work, and indeed we can use this overly large width for the standard deviation itself. As the saying goes, close only counts in horseshoes and regression fitting. That said, we should probably still test this model for reasonableness. Let's lock all the values of our parameters. What this does is prevents the computer from changing those values when it's trying to come up with the best fit model for this data. Essentially, when we click fit model, the computer will just plot what we've given it. So let's do that. We can see that the computer has now plotted the smooth curve of our model. It's not totally accurate, but it should be accurate enough for the computer to find the best fit model. Let's uncheck all of the values that we locked and overwrite our fit model so that the computer can find the actual best fit. And it's done. At this point, the fit looks pretty good, but the visualization is a little bit difficult because by default, both of these have been plotted in red. Let's exit the model fitting menu and go to the plot options dropdown. From here, let's adjust the layers that are visible. In order to show our subset in red, JD Avis has created specific layers with those subsets. Let's turn those off. Now, let's give our model a color say some shade of blue. Now we can see 
this bright blue line which traces its way across our data. We can also reset to the original zoom in order to get a better picture of how our model fits in with the overall data. This view shows that our model fits fairly well for the continuum region on the right, but doesn't fit the spectrum everywhere. In addition to using the Layer Options tool to select which datasets are visible, we can also use the tool in the upper left corner, Select Datasets to Display. For example, if we only wanted to look at our model, we could uncheck the SpecVis data box. And now, all that we see is the final model, which is our linear fit plus the Gaussian fit. Let's add the data back in. And now let's uncheck the model. And you'll notice that our subset has now been highlighted again. This is what SpecVis will default to when displaying the data, but we can once again turn that off by going under Plot Options and turning off that layer. Alternatively, we can also delete that subset to prevent it from showing up. Another available tool is the Line Lists tool. We can use this to plot lists of known spectral lines and compare them against our data. As an example, if we go to Preset Line Lists and select Hydrogen Helium, we can load that into our list of loaded lines and then select Plot All. You'll notice that four red vertical lines have now appeared on our spectrum. If we like, we could add additional lines by selecting another line list, loading it in, and as before, selecting Plot All. There's a tool located in the toolbar called Select or Identify Spectral Line. And if you click on this and then click on any one of the lines, over in the sidebar, it will display the name of that line and its associated wavelength. This line is associated with hydrogen and can be found at 17.035 microns. In fact, we're going to take a closer look at this line in particular. So to keep our view simplified, we will erase all of our lines and then create a custom set of lines to plot. So we'll name this H2 for molecular hydrogen. Its rest value is 17.035 and the unit is microns. So we'll add that line and it's now in our custom line list and has already been plotted for us. One way we can use this line information is to match it with our known emission peaks. We can do that by adjusting the redshift slider until we find that it's roughly in the right position. There are also arrow options for more fine-tuned adjustments of the redshift, or you can manually input a value. JD Avis also converts this into an equivalent relative velocity. We can check this value by going back to our model fitting and taking a look to see where the mean of the Gaussian is. Since this was at 17.4834, and we expect to see a line at 17.035, that gives us an expected redshift of 0 0.0263. And indeed, we can see that we are almost exactly at that value. If we'd like, we could change this to match exactly as our calculation says, Doing so reveals a great fit between our line and the center of the emission. Having this level of control over the entire process is nice, but if we're looking for a quick way to do this, there's also the option to use the line analysis tool, which will do much the same. You can select the subset that contains the peak of interest, and then you can set the continuum spec by selecting surrounding and adjusting it to the appropriate width, or you can pre-select a subset and load it in here and the computer will calculate the centroid of the Gaussian along with the redshift as long as you give it a reference line. So in this case, it calculates our centroid as being 17.483, which compares favorably with our model also calculating 17.483. And it can handle the redshift automatically and gives us a value of 0 0.263, which is the value that we calculated just now. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope you found it helpful, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to the MAST Archive Help Desk email, which is available in the description.